So this here is a painting video on how to do Abaddon to the spoiler. As you can see, we just finished him, and he looks fantastic. I'm really happy with the way this model turned out. If you want yours to look very similar, feel free to tune in, stay tuned, and we will show you exactly how we got here from where we started from. So we've just finished priming our model, and as we showed in our uh, model review, we haven't completely put him together. So we kept the cloak separate because we're going to add it later, but it's impossible to do the detail of behind him with this cloak that's going to be in the way, so we're going to do that separate. We've also primed them. So we've primed Chaos Black on him in the cloak, and we've primed just a normal gray primer that I had lying around for the base, which you see here. So that gives us everything sort of ready, and I'm just trying to attach them to a base to make them a little easier to work with instead of holding them, because I don't want to attach them to this base just yet, because it is easier to get underneath him to all of the other parts there. So we're gonna leave that dry. If it attaches, great. If not, well, we'll figure something else out. But we are, um, we'll be right back. So now we're set up to paint. We've got him somewhat attached to a base. It's just enough for us to hold on to. The glue didn't really set, so what we ended up doing is drilling a hole in the bottom, and then I could feed the leg piece inside, and then I put just a dab of glue there. It'll be easy to take apart later when I fix them back to the official base. So the first thing we're gonna do is take a little bit of Retributor Armor and do the trim all around the legs, the arms, the torso, and all that stuff, making sure we get as much of the detail as we can. Uh, and this will be our base color for our trim. Use our fine detail brush. And just like that, we're just gonna put in all the trim along. Using very watered down paints. And this will probably take two coats for each of these areas. What we also did was did the base and we just did the wing and the base of the fire pot with the same Retributor armor. So now that we finished with all of that Retributor armor, what we're going to do now is shade all the gold and we're going to use Agrax Earth Shade, of which I'm running out. So we're going to use a little bit of that and just highlight all of the detail on the gold we just did. So as you can see here, I'm just going to take a little bit of that shade and just go through all the detail, darkening that up. And it'll sink into the spaces as it dries. Really light up all that detail. Don't worry if you go over the black, because what we're gonna do is do the black trim later and fill in all that black color. Anything in the black will be covered over later. So there's our model as we just finished shading. So we're gonna leave that dry. The details will all sink in and then we'll be back to do the next part. Well, I was gonna come back and paint this later um, with the reddish color from the box art, but what I ended up deciding to do is I came back and I redid it with gold, and I'm gonna shade it with Reeklin Flesh Shade, and I happen to have a gloss one here, and I'm gonna continually shade that, allowing the red to collect in the spaces, and then that should fill in, it'll give us a, a bit of a color depth, and then when we come up, we'll just light up the gold over the top afterwards. So we're gonna do that shade now. Tip it down a little, just so it can collect in the grooves a bit better. And it's gonna take a couple of coats here to really fill in, and I don't wanna overfill it, because I don't want it spreading onto the other areas of the model for now. And normally at this time, I'd like to finish the gold, put the highlight trim on it, and, uh, and go from there, but this, uh, this panel hasn't really finished drying yet, and it's gonna need at least another coat of shade, which will make three. So I don't want to do the gold just yet. So in the meanwhile, what we're gonna do is start doing some of the metal trim. So we're gonna use our lead belcher base, which is pretty much the uh, go-to for metal. And then we're just gonna take our fine detail brush and start going over All the details like these chains. We're also going to do these uh, cords, cables. 
we're going to do the power claw and then we're going to do all the hydraulics that are in the back of the terminator armor everything powered to help them move and then we'll probably add a trim on the bullets and we'll probably hit the bolters as well so we're going to do all that now and then we'll meet back here so this is him after we finished our base layer of metal and as you can see here this is a fantastic model so we did the tubing all in the front here as well as the chain he's wearing an exoskeleton which uh, runs basically all around the body and all around the back of the body which is absolutely fantastic because in the lore a terminator armor is massively heavy you need a lot of powered machinery to move it and abaddon's is particularly heavy and he is particularly strong which is why when he hits you he hits like a truck uh they put on the um the entire exoskeleton on this on this model it is fantastic so anyway we painted all of that did the vents did the uh, power going to the talent of Horus, and then on the talent of Horus, we did the double bolter on the back as well as pretty much the entire talent itself i was on the fence whether i was going to do the inside palm um, and I may still go back and do it black afterwards, but we'll see what it looks like after it's shaded. I may just shade it with Newell Oil and leave it. Um, and then we did all the claws of the talent as well. When I did the claws, I used a very, 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 very watered down layer. So it was runny. And so it made a very nice, smooth surface. Because you don't want any imperfections on the surface. Because the claw is one of the things people's attention is drawn to. There are some metal parts on the head, but I left the head to deal with once we paint the head itself and shade it. It'll be very easy to color in what we need. So we'll leave that for after. And then I put another coat of um, Reichland Flesh Shade gloss over that front pay, uh, belt. And as you can see, it's starting to look very, very red and very, very shiny. And it's starting to stand out pretty nicely. So looking back at that box art, I think we had missed something. It looks like the the post that's holding up the trophy rack is also metal. So we came back and we did that with lead belcher as well. So now we're going to finish leaving all that to dry. So now that the lead belcher has dried, what we're going to do is now go over it all with Newell oil. And that'll get us some more detail here. So we're just going to shade all of it like that, pushing it all into the recesses and bring in as much detail as we can. And the chain. Like that. So we're going to do all the rest of the metal and then we'll meet back here afterwards. So while we're waiting for all our shades to dry, what we're going to do is take a little bit of Xandri dust and we're going to go over all of the dirt that's on this base plate. Um, we won't do the base plate itself. We'll use that, save that for some, some flock. But offhand here, what we're going to do is start doing just like the, the ground. So he's standing on a brighter terrain when we do finally put them together. And then with something like this, after the Xandri dust is done, uh, don't worry about the bullet casings because we're going to deal with those as well. I try to avoid the ultramarine here and I try to avoid getting at any of the, the, the stuff that had already been painted, but we are going to put a little bit of a highlight layer on that later. So we'll leave that to dry and we'll move on from there. So we're back now and we're going to start working on that gold again as everything's now dry. So we're going to take uh, Liberator Gold. And we're going to use that as a highlight layer. And we're going to very carefully go over all of the gold we had already previously painted, lightening it up like so. So that's what we look like now that we've finished the gold highlight with Liberator Gold. What we're going to do now is just take the metal post that's holding up the trophy stand and we're going to wash that with Agrax Earthshade because it's a little bit too bright compared to where we'd like it to be. So I'd like to wash that a little bit just to make it a little bit dirtier there. All 
I still have the Agrax Earthshade out. We're going to shade the terrain piece. Just so you end up with that effect there. So we'll let that dry and sink in and we'll move on from there. So the next part, what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of Iron Breaker and we're going to light it up the metal in the exact same way we just lit up the gold. With a fine detail brush, we're just going to lightly go over some of these chains. So we'll do the rest of the model like that and we'll meet back here afterwards. So with our metal highlighted now, um, we're finished with most of our metallics. So what we're going to do is move on to the other material around. We may as well do the skulls now. So that includes the skulls all in the back of the trophy rack, the skull dangling from the chain, as well as all of the skulls that are adorning the base plate. So all of that is going to go rack earth flesh for a base. Uh, we could use Zandri dust, but I think we're going to want them a little bit whiter than and brighter than, than just uh, disposed of skulls. The other thing we're going to do is we're going to base coat the head as well with rack earth flesh. So we're going to do both of those things now, and then we'll meet back here. So with our skulls finished, with the base layer, what we're going to do now is highlight it a little bit with a Screaming Skull. And then all we're going to do is cover over everything that we did with Rackard Flesh. With the exception of the head, we do not want to do the head at this point. Uh, we'll deal with that after. But just a dry brush layer, a Screaming Skull over the front, and you see the difference in the color between the two. We're going to do the rest of the skulls, including on the base plate here and then we'll be right back. So that's our finished uh, appearance once we've done the screaming skull over all of the skulls here. We're actually going to take a little bit of Balthazar gold and go over the you know 30 or 40 shell casings that are here on the ground just individually pick out each of those bolter shell casings and we're going to work our way through the land piece like that. So we'll do that, we'll meet back here um, and then we'll shade with Agrax Earth Shade. Now all those shell casings are done and like I said what we're going to do is take a little bit of our Agrax Earth Shade and we're just going to shade in all of that area there. Just put some detail back on the shells. Also going to shade in all of the skulls. And if you put too much like I did there, just dry your brush and sop it up. Just like so. Something like that. I'm going to do the same thing on the skulls on the trophy rack here. So we'll finish that up and we'll meet back here in a minute. So while we're waiting for the rest of that shade to dry, what we're going to do is start some of the red in here as well in the meanwhile. So we're going to take a little bit of Mephiston red and we're mainly going to be doing the uh, top knot hair as well as apparently according to the box art this is a blood angel here. So we're going to do that one and apparently according to the box art this helmet here is a blood angel as well. So we're going to be doing those three things with Mephiston Red. I'm going to use a very, very watered down layer. So I've got some good coverage there like so. Being very careful not to go on any of our finished material. So we're going to finish that and meet back here in a few minutes. This is what he looks like now that we finished our Mephiston red. And what we're going to do now is shade all of that red with 
Agrax Earthshade again. Just like so. Making sure it gets in all the grooves. We're also going to do the helmet. Now the helmet also has um, respirators on it and that kind of thing. So we'll come back around and do that with lead belcher and then Newell oil and then uh, iron breaker. So we'll just do that in between. We don't have to show that on camera because we've already done that with all of the metal on Abaddon himself. Our model is coming along quite nicely. While we're still waiting for the Agrax earth shade to dry, what we're going to do is also shade his face. So for this, we're going to use a Reclaim Flesh Shade, but not the same one we ended up using on the uh, chest piece here. Um, that was a gloss. So in this case, what we're going to use is just a normal Reclaim Flesh Shade, because I don't want his face glossy at all. Um, but that is why this still has its very wet look on the front here. Um, in this case, we're going to use just straight up Reclaim Flesh Shade, and we're just going to cover the face. So with a very detailed brush. What we're going to do is just take a little bit and just slowly cover them up. Sort of all over. So we'll let that settle for now while that dries and all the other shades dry. And then we'll be back here again for our next part. So now that we're back, we're going to take a little bit more of the Mephist and Red we did earlier. In this case, we're going to make it a very, very dry brush. We're just going to go back over the hair that we did earlier. Bringing some of the color back out that we had darkened with the shade. We're actually going to do that with the helmet and the one on the ground too. So we'll do that and we'll meet right back here again in a few minutes. So now that we finish with that fist in red, what we're going to do now is just a dry brush of Evil Sun Scarlet right over the high points of the fist in red, especially on the hair. And that brightens that up even more. Something like that. And then we'll do the same for the helmet on the ground here. Just like that. So Avedon's coming on quite nicely now. What we're going to do here is take a little bit of Wild Rider Red, which is even brighter than the Evil Sun Scarlet. And we're going to use that as a very, very thin edge highlight layer, which we're going to do on just the highest points of the hair here. Just to give it a little bit more color there. We're also going to use it on just the edge of this helmet. the eyes. Just like that, just to make it stand out a little bit more. We're going to do the same thing with the helmet on the ground. And then we're going to go from there. So this is how our red looks once we're finished. All of the edge highlights are done with the Wild Rider Red. This is also a great time to change your water because there's probably be a lot of red pigment in it. What we're doing now is dealing with the final coat on the skulls as well as cleaning up the face. And both of those you're going to want clean, whiter colors as opposed to any red pigment in them. So this is a great time to change your water and we'll be right back. So what we're going to do now 
for Abaddon's head is we're going to take that Rackarth Fletch that we used earlier and with a very, very detailed brush we're just going to push on the highlights there just to clean up some of that shade. We're just going to dry brush over that there as best we can. Bringing out some more of that color there, just like so. So we're going to leave it here for a minute, let it dry, and then we're going to come back with a highlight layer. So here's where we are now that everything is dry. And what we're going to do is return back to the skulls, as well as finish off Abaddon's face both of which are going to be done with the same color, which is going to be Pallid Witch Flesh. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our Pallid Witch Flesh and a little bit of a dry brush, and we're just going to go over these skulls. Just to brighten them up a little bit. That's the palette which flesh over all of the skulls. We're going to take a little bit more of it. We're just going to highlight with the dry brush a little bit around the brow. And the nose. very slowly just like that and from there we'll move on we're going to do the respirator in the lead belcher followed by the new one oil followed by the iron breaker so we're going to do the respirator here as well as that side as well as some of the metallic bits around the head now that the head is finished. So we'll do that and we'll meet back here. So what we're going to do is go back and clean up all of the black, any place that we've overrun with the gold. And what we're going to use is obviously Abaddon Black. So we're going to do that now with a very fine detail brush. Just going to come through and clean up all of that black that's there and go through the entire model cleaning up all the edges. So we'll do that now and then we'll meet back here. So our Abaddon is coming along very nicely now. We're finished with the black trim all along the edges. So now what we're going to do is deal with the sword blade over here and our plan is to start with Incubi Darkness, but inherently we're going to start with a teal of some sort uh, and as dark as we can get, so this one works very well. So we're going to start with that and with a very clear watered down layer we're just going to start painting the blade. It occurs to me that before we do any more on the blade we should probably do the hilt. The hilt needs to go an orange brown color, which I don't actually own um, the closest I have is a Dryad Bark or a Rhinox Hide, uh, which is more of a wooden color. So the best I've got is a Corn Red that we're going to darken with a shade. So we'll do a little bit of Corn Red. 
Just carefully picking up that little demon face at the bottom there. So anyway, we'll finish that and we'll meet back here again in a moment. So there's our sword hilt finished. So what we're going to do is take some Agrax Earthshade and shade it in to try to get that reddish brown color that we want. While we're waiting for that Agrax Earthshade to dry, what we're going to do is start in the flames on this staff. And what we're going to do is use Ceramite White to just completely paint it white, and then we'll work from there. We may as well go back to the sword. So each of these little faces uh, needs to be filled in with white. So what we're going to do is take a little bit of white scar and try our best to color in each of those areas as best we can there. So if you take the white scar and you water it down enough, you'll find that it all runs right into those holes. So you almost have a, a reversed image here. But you can definitely see how each of the holes have been filled with white scar. So, and then same thing on this side. Each of the holes there have been filled. So that's kind of what you're aiming for. Water it down a lot so it falls right in. And then we'll wait for that to dry before we move on. On a brighter note, our uh, corn red wash is dry, so we'll move on from there. So what we'll do now is we're going to dry brush the detail back onto that sword. And the best color we have is Jokero Orange. So that's what we're going to use. With a fine detail brush. So we'll see how that looks after it dries, and we may have to reshade it, but we'll see where we end up here. So coming back to the sword, we're going to start dealing with the um, blade itself again. So we're going to go to Araman Blue, just because we play Thousand Suns and we have lots of blue. So we're going to start with that, with our detail brush and a very dry... Just going to go a little bit lightly. What we want to do is paint the blade, but not the faces. So we want to go just lightly over the top of that. See? Almost like tracing paper. So there's our finished blue color. And as you can see, the little faces are definitely visible. So what we're going to do now is highlight over the arm in blue. And our main choice for that is Temple Guard Blue. So that's what we'll use. So with a very fine detail brush, we're going to go along the edges of that sword. Very similar to when we did the flaming swords of the blood letters. Pretty much the same idea. Definitely got a fine edge on that. Then we're going to come through and really color in the front half. Make it decidedly visible. And finally, we're going to draw that central line, same as what we did with the blood letters. Something like that. We're going to do the same on the back side. So now what we're going to do is, as it's a power sword, and there are ways to do power swords, what you do is you do half of the blade in dark, and the other half in light. On the other side, you switch the two colors. So inherently what you have is, is definitely a distinct um, 3D look. So what we're going to do here is we're going to shade this side dark. We effectively want it purple. So we're going to use maybe a Jushi Violet, 
And we're just going to come down on the inside of that track just to darken it up a little bit. So we'll do that right now. So with our fine detail brush. section right there between those two little mounts. Like that. So we'll keep at this and then we'll be back in a few minutes. So the only other half of the thing we're going to do is a little bit of white scar which we had out earlier. I'm going to do that just along the edge and just along the tip here. Just concentric layers like that until it slowly brightens up like that and then same thing coming across the front of the brush here something like that to get our power sword going so we'll keep at that and then we'll be back in a few minutes so with the sword pretty much finished and the base almost done there we're going to go back to the cloak so I think what we're going to do is make it brown just to separate it from the uh, black armor that he's wearing and it matches better to the box art. So I think what we're going to do is dry it bark and we're going to give it a full base coat of that first. So just like so. And we're going to do both sides of the cloak. And we're going to do the loincloth on the front of Abaddon as well at the same time. So do that to all three and we'll be right back. Now that we've done our brown cloaks, what we're going to do is wash the entire set of cloaks with Nuln oil. And then we're going to let that dry as well while we're waiting for that. We're going to wash the flames in Cassandora yellow straight out of the bottle and we're just going to put a wash on all of that. And then we're just washing this with Cassandra Yellow, getting it in all the cracks and creating a nice start to a flame. So I'll leave all of those shades dry. Once the shade is dry on the the front tabard here, the loincloth, as well as the back surface of the cloak, we're going to put a highlight layer of Gorther Brown, and all we're going to do is dry brush on the raised areas and on the edges, as well as along any tears or rips, and that's just going to bring out a highlight of uh, lighter than, uh, than the rest of the model. And we'll bring it back here once it's finished. So while we're still working on the flames, what we're going to do is take a little bit of Troll Slayer Orange. Put a lot of watered down layer. So that it runs very well. We're going to do the back half of these flames here. We'll leave that dry for a little bit. We're also going to take some of that dry head bark that we had earlier and we're going to do this post right here just so that's finished as well and we'll be right back. So now while we're waiting for the fire to dry and the post to dry what we're going to do is take a little bit of Eschen Grey 
can do all the stones. This one, that one, that stone there. And we're going to do all those stones. And then we're going to be back. But before we finish that, what we're going to do is take that same Eschen Gray. And we're going to highlight all these scuff marks. So there's one there. We're going to do these spikes. We're going to do a little bit around that grill. And there's one on this side as well. Spikes on the back. Spikes on this collar. And a few scratches down below here. And we're going to light all that up with just a little bit of Eschen Gray. So we'll do that and we'll meet back here. We're going to take a little bit of Wild Rider Red. And dry brush some. And then a back half of these flames. Finally, as we're going, we're going to paint that Space Marine that's lying on the ground. We're going to do it with a base of Cantor Blue. We're going to very delicately pick out all of the areas where he's at. Once we're finished that, we're also going to use Retributor Armor for the little trim on the two shoulder pads. And then we'll meet back here. So now that we've got our ultimate green painted, what we're going to do now is take a little bit of Rackarth Flesh and do the strip up the top. And then what we're going to do is shade the entire Space Marine with Agrax Earthshade, as well as this cord we did earlier. And this post here as well. At this point, we're going to Agrax Earthshade the entire model here. So, while we're shading, we're going to take a little bit of Carsberg Crimson and shade that flame again. This time we're going to focus on just the back half of it. Much like that. For all these shades to dry, we're going to take a little bit of Dawnstone and we're going to dry brush it over all of these rocks. With our fine detail brush, we're going to take a little bit of our Mephiston Red just draw a vertical stripe up the center of this band here. those lines just to create a lieutenant mark. With a bit more than the fist in red, we're just going to coat the ends of this flame. So the first thing we're going to do is take Thousand Suns Blue, because I don't own McCraggy Blue, which sucks. But we're going to put a little dry brush of that. over the ultramarine here just to brighten them up a little bit. So that adds a little bit more color there. Finally, I would take a little bit of Uriel Yellow and with a dry brush 
my dry brush some highlights back into the flame here. Just to give it a bit more of a mixture. Finally, I would take a little bit of Balthazar Gold and with a fine detail brush, I would do the brazier itself. So we'll do that with our fine brush and we'll be right back. With the outside of the cloak finished with Gorther Brown, what we're going to do is do the inside of the cloak and we're going to do that with corn red and we're just going to do just the lightest highlight all over the raised areas but as light as we can do it we don't want to make the cloak itself red As well, what we did was we dry brushed a little bit of the corn red over the Gorther Brown that we had on the front as well to give that a little bit more of a red tinge there and better match the piece he had on his waist there. Like that. Now for the fur trim at the top, this is going to be very similar to our Master of Possession. What we're going to do is take a base of Rackarth Flesh and we're going to color this completely in and then we're going to wash it afterwards with an Agrax Earthshade. With the Master Possession we used a Recon Flesh Shade. Either one works but in this case I want it more fur than more uh, red. So we'll do that now and we'll meet back here in a few minutes. Don't forget to do both parts on the fur coat tops, as we had mentioned earlier. And we'll stand these guys up upwards so that it drains down and the shade settles downwards. Finally, we're going to take a little bit of Palette Witch Flesh and we're going to dry brush that over the fur coat. The cloak is now mounted onto Abaddon. We're just about finished our model. One of the last things we have to do is take a little bit of Retributor Armor and touch up on the skull face that's right on the side of the gun here. We're going to want that to be gold. Just like so. Finally, we're going to want to do the two eyes of Horus. So we're going to start that with some Troll Slayer Orange. And with a very fine detail brush. We're going to color in that spot right there. And then on the shoulder pad, we're going to color in the center. Continuing with our Eyes of Horus, we're going to take a little bit of Uriel Yellow and we're going to do the outside of those eyes right there with 
a very fine detail brush again. Like so. And I'm also going to put one tiny spot in the center. Like so. So finally we're going to take a little tiny bit of Reekland Flesh Shade and we're going to go right over this eye that we made here. So we'll let that dry for a few moments. Finally with a very small detail brush, I'm going to put a slit of Abaddon Black. The center of that eye there. I'm not particularly happy with the way this eye looks, so we're going to take Abaddon Black and just color in that triangle. That looks a bit better there. And finally we're going to take a little tiny bit of Palette Witch Flesh and give an edge highlight. To that gem like so. Finally, I don't like the color of the leather collar here. So we're gonna replace that with dryad bark just to match the rest of the leather coat. So we'll do that now as well. And finally, we're going to take a little bit of Gortha Brown and just an edge highlight on this coat. Right up here. Just like so. So this is the completed model, all finished, based, and you can see how the sand blended in really nicely with the uh, original Zandri Dust base. So this is a fantastic model. I really like the way it came out. It looks great. The detail on it is exceptional, and I'm very happy with the way it turned out. I hope yours turned out very similar to the way this one did. If you found this video helpful, feel free to add a like, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and we will see you again the next time we do another painting video. Thank you for tuning in and you guys have a wonderful day.